Right. We're back for some more Broken Sword 1, Shadow of the Templars, the director's cut, with me, Dimwolf. It's been a while. Um, since I went to my new PC, I actually lost my saves. So I had to play back to where it was. Didn't take that long. So we're back. Sort of. Um, I'm probably like five, ten minutes away from where I really was, but I didn't want to like overplay in case I passed it, so... This one here, it's there, sort of. I don't know, I don't... I know I left off at the police station, but... Oh, hi! Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good, it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. Do you recognize this nose? No, monsieur. What can you tell me about this tissue? Nothing. <laughs> what can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. What do you make of this tool? Is it something a dentist would use? No, it's for raising manhole covers. Formidable. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Well, thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. <laughs> do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see, because of the dam. The landlord said he'd fix it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating. It's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. I don't know, how the hell do you cry yourself to sleep? Because wouldn't they keep you up instead of making you go to sleep? Or maybe it makes you so tired. Because you just managed That'd be weird. Have you seen anyone out here watching Mademoiselle Collard's apartment? Yes, I have. A strange man. Tall and thin as a broomstick. He kept his face hidden. But I saw his eyes peering from evil little slits. How was he dressed? A long brown raincoat with a hat. Or like Humphrey Bogart. Yes, but he didn't have Bogart's charisma. Besides, this guy looked like he needed a toilet. You never saw Bogart clenching his buttocks like that. I really love the art style of this game. It reminds me of um, a PS1 game. What was it called? Uh, Mulan. It wasn't like, you know, much of a big game. It was a point-and-click fun game. It was quite good graphics. It was quite fun. Is there anything else you can tell me about Mademoiselle Collard? No, monsieur. No. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. Finally, music. My, oh my. What a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? How does this fortune-telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? <sighs> well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones.
Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people, I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Hey. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. That's right, monsieur. You will. That was creepy, that last line of hers. That was her voice, but. Remembering it's just the creepy. flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently just above the lock. Hi. Bonjour. I'm glad you could make it, monsieur. Uh, please, uh, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. <coughs> a beer? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers underneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck. Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? My editor told me to drop the story. Can you believe it? But you're not going to do that. Oh, no. I'm going to find out what's behind these killings. <laughs> it just doesn't add up. Uh, it almost feels like some sort of conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very I'll quiet about the murders. It. The press don't Aye. connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about That's everyone. Like 15 minutes. I found this tissue down the sewer. <laughs> That's disgusting, George. No, no, no. I think the stuff on it is grease paint, like actors use or clowns. It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. <laughs> I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George. It's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy is wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his right cheek. He was standing right there. Scar in the right there. shape of a horseshoe. Or a crescent moon. I found this false nose in the sewer. Hey, what's this inside it? The contents of someone's nose? Don't be cross, George. <laughs> it says La Rise du Monde. Masks and costumes. <clears throat> it's a costume shop near the Gare Saint Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. The quicker we didn't have its legs. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. This is the tool I use to get into the sewers. Fascinating, George. You're not interested, are you? Oh, of course I am. I think it was very brave of you to go down those sewers. Yeah? Well, it was kind of scary, but... Well, I had a job to do. <laughs> tell me more about yourself. <laughs> There's nothing much to tell. Well, how'd you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought me my first camera. I was eight, and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes. My mother went off with her new boyfriend. I didn't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted me to study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arno Bellotta, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines. 
in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it, millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was lured to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. How did he die? At the hands, or should I say flippers, of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. I had been about to add mine to the list, but stopped myself. I really didn't want to have to explain to George about my father's involvement with Cachon. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you this, I will not be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance for a big break. Or an early death. I kind of agree. <laughs> I kind of like the way that the... I have to go. Okay, the I'll see you later. In different costumes. Okay, why am I going? Uh, so we're heading to Loris Cafe, Rujari. I think we went to the. Yeah, we did this first. Who cares if we do it again, eh? So what else is in this room besides the accordion thing? Is that an accordion? Because I don't want to be stupid again. That's enough of that. Let's let me cook you death. Ah! Okay. I thought it was going to last like a couple of seconds, not that long. Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please, come in. Welcome. Leave the mundane world behind. For in these four walls, fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible! You'll be telling me next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie. I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of course. How can I help you? Right. This. <laughs> what does this tool mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. <laughs> Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall any one of that name. I'm looking for a man who hired a clown costume from you. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Impossible. There are too many. Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. Best Imers number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La creme de la creme of Cespian accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes. Toucan. <coughs> Toucan. Do you recognize this man? Ah, oui. He was here this morning. That is the man to whom I sold the grease paint. I remember the scar on his face. He chose two costumes, Bozo the Clown and Seamus the Pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, Monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> I like how it's sinister. What are you trying to do? Kill me? You did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift? Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> oh my god. Oh dear. 
I think after I did that, I went to the police. And talked to Monsieur Mustache. Sergeant Moo? Ah, Monsieur Stobart, n'est-ce pas? That's correct. You remember me. The retention of such data is part of my duty as a gendarme. That is our crime is fought through attention to detail, not intuition. Yes, yeah, sure. Would you like to shake my hand, Sergeant? Not while I'm on duty, Monsieur. The gesture could be misconstrued. Oh. Do you recognize this dirty tissue? No, Monsieur, I do not. I found it in the sewer. Perhaps it would be better if you put it back there. No Pretty way. Cool. This could be an important clue. If you say so, Monsieur. No, I just realized. No, what he looks like. <clears throat> uh, he looks like that guy um, from that movie, Atlantis, the cartoon, the movie. Uh, the guy who uses dynamite sticks and loves to blow stuff up because the mustache. That's probably the only reason he looks like him. I found this red nose in the That's sewer. What, what were you doing down there? Fishing for clues. That's where the clown went. You still insist you saw a clown, monsieur? Of course. And this novelty nose proves it. It will take more than a plastic proboscis to convince Inspector Rousseau. You don't want this as evidence, then? Certainly not, monsieur. What do you suppose this tool is used for, Sergeant Moo? It looks like something an obstetrician would use, monsieur. I don't think so. I found it in that workman's toolbox. Found it? I hope you did not steal it, monsieur. Do I look like a common thief? He asked me to look after his hole and his belongings. You certainly know how to enjoy your vacation to the fullest, monsieur. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. It's the guy who bombed the cafe. The clown. This man looks nothing like a clown. He's taken off his grease paint and costume. Then there is nothing to link this man with the killing. Nothing? Look at those murderous eyes. Hmm. Hardly likely to get him convicted. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kinda... I owe it to him to find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go on and try to forget. I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Plantau. Is that so? You knew him, did you? No, but... We'll know everything there is to know about him soon enough. I'm trying to be helpful here. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. Do you know a man named Khan? He's a shifty-looking guy with a scar on his right cheek. No, monsieur. Has this man any connection with the bombing of the cafe? Yes. I believe Khan was the name he used when he hired the clown costume. Is Rosso here? Yes, he is. You wish to speak to him? Yes, I do. One moment, monsieur. It's Stobart, monsieur. He insists on talking to you again. Did he say what it was about? No, monsieur. Very well. <coughs> Hi, Inspector. Remember me? But of course, Mr. Stobard. My mind is a well-ordered faculty. A mental classification system that's the envy of the Bibliothèque Nationale. No tricks, mark you, monsieur. Just exercise. Just as our muscles waste through inactivity, so our minds decay. But there is no need. If only people would learn to exercise their wits daily. If he was trying to impress me, it worked. He was pompous and patronizing, but he had style. Eh bien, if you called about the bombing, you're too late. Investigations have been closed, but I've been taken off the case. What about the murder, the dead guy? It is out of my hands. Don't you want to know what I found out about the killer? I told you, monsieur, the case is closed. I have washed my hands of the whole affair. Then I'll have to continue my investigations without your help. No. You must forget the business of the clown completely. 
Go back to being an ordinary tourist, Stobard. Did you find out the ID of the guy who was killed in the explosion? I already knew who he was. I heard that the bomb victim's name was Plantow. Your sources are reliable. He was a big shot of the Treasury, wasn't he? Maybe that's why you've been taken off the case. I'm sorry, monsieur. I cannot comment. Mm. So long, Inspector. And that's where I think I left it. After leaving this conversation. See you later, Sergeant. It was just some police paperwork, a search warrant. All right, then. <clears throat> I'll be back soon. This time, I'm not going to be gone for quite a while. This is just going to be, like, a minute. So, I'll see you soon.